Okay, so welcome to Salvatore to our product talk. Um, we are organizing this product talk in our Monkeys team, which is the tech and product team to have some sharing knowledge with other professionals from other companies so that it will be easier for us to learn and to, of course, share experiences on uh, both sides. Um, as I said, thanks, Salvatore, to, to joining our session. Uh, I will start briefly maybe by introducing yourself before going directly into questions. There are a lot of questions. Of course. <laughs> well, first I mean, of all, thank you. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate to be here today. Um, well, I can give you a bit of an introduction about myself. Um, I work at Lebara as a senior product design manager. I am responsible for managing the design team and I would also say the design function at this point. I work closely with the senior leadership team, so I report to the head of digital. Uh, I also report to the brand director, and I work very closely with the CCO, who, uh, who basically falls under the commercial team. Uh, we work very closely with technology team, of course, but also with marketing, because we have people in our team who work on the brand design. Uh, I joined Lebara three years ago, I was in charge for building up the team from scratch. Uh, I was the first person joining the design team because the business went through a, a, a change of ownership. And since then, we basically built the design team, the design function, uh, all the foundations. So design system, we have retransformed all our digital ecosystem platforms. And now I'm basically between managing the team, but also working very closely with the senior leadership. So this is where I am now. I've been working in design, uh, UX, UI, but also in digital design in the past. Uh, I've been working in design for 10 years now. Started in, in Italy uh, at Nana Bianca, a startup accelerator, working with different startups. I also had a chance to build my own startup for a couple of years. Very challenging, uh, very rewarding, but also really hard really, really hard. So it was it's a, it was a good challenge for me to learn about business more in depth and also building something from scratch and, you know, learning step by step. Thanks. So I would start with the questions. I try to um, cluster them into micro topics. Uh, I will start with the collaboration one. Um, the first uh, question will be around as a product designer, how do you work with the product managers, the engineering managers, and any other engineers within the team, both on the discovery and the delivery phases of a, of a product? Yeah, so I can give you my experience from a, a design leadership, because at this point, I am working on a, on a, leader, on a design leadership level. Uh, I think one of the big, biggest challenges uh, of collaboration is making sure that people communicate constantly. There is never a moment where people keep things to themselves when it comes to uh, product management to share the right requirements, uh, clarifying any, any doubts that might arise from the team, from both the design team, but also from technology team, because we work very closely with product managers, but also with technology. So we consider ourselves always in between. And from our side, to make sure that we communicate the details of what we are doing and how our design has been designed. And if there are any uh, any doubts from technology, we need to make sure that we are able to provide them these details when it comes to interaction points, when it comes to experience overall. Uh, we try to do our best to provide guidelines, to provide prototypes. Um, when it comes to product management, and not just product management, because considering that we work in multiple countries, we have to operate across different nations. We need to make sure that we can also present our design in the way that the stakeholder is expecting that to be done. So if they provide requirements, we need to make sure that we can explain where the requirements are going to be uh, covered in each and every design, so different journeys, for example. So I, I see the really important matter here is always communication, 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 communication. Okay, the the big uh, <laughs> the big word. Okay. Um, 
continue with um, the, the collaboration part uh, and you were talking about to say how to present the information to, to the stakeholder um, do you have any schedule ceremonies for example design critique or uh, any specific design session that you do with a product team before going to the stakeholder before and going to the development team with uh, with the final design yeah so we do it in different ways uh we don't have one one size fit all is more about if we are talking about a small task so usually we work with tickets uh what we usually do is if there is a senior designer working in this ticket i usually don't need to review that from my side from my side i don't, i feel like I, I i no longer need to do that uh they can just make the design present it to the stakeholder to the requester of course reviewing it first with the product manager and the product owner and then if all the requirements are in place then they can present it to the requester if instead we are talking about a project so let's say we are working on something bigger then what we usually do is we have our own internal design reviews which can be on a weekly basis or on a, a fortnightly basis depending on the size of the project and then we usually go and check what's the progress and if we need to make some adjustments to timelines if we need to make adjustments on the way how we are operating on that specific project so it, it really changes depending on on each uh, on each activity but i think uh, overall what i usually always recommend to my team is uh, communicate to each other even uh, with uh, even outside those design reviews make sure that you can exchange feedback and you can ask feedback from someone else from your team because each person has very clear responsibilities and they have a very specific perspective on something which can be from ux to ui to branding so i always want everyone to be involved in these reviews sure good and um let me see if there's something related to this and uh and regarding you say communication and feedback from from the different teams so, so always focusing on collaboration do you have any advice on the organization level how to improve for example synergies between the product manager and the product design team on this aspect of finding a um, a solution together yeah so uh, there is always challenges sometimes when it comes to certain requests uh probably the the main conflict comes from business because you, usually business has very specific requests and from a ux perspective we think more about the customer and the user experience so sometimes we need to trade off so what we usually do is we try to understand what is the, the reason why business is pushing back on something we usually also have the product manager being in between us between between business and, and our team so we try to negotiate what we think could be the best solution to give customers the best experience but also uh, satisfying the business request and this is how usually we do is uh, is having conversations with product managers mm -hmm. uh, potentially also with business as well and then there is a point where we need to literally negotiate what can be the best solution we provide multiple options and then we we, we agree on going ahead with one option and then potentially making iterative improvements once the you know functionality rather than the page gone live by doing a b testing um i guess there might be a question like yeah so on the, uh, it, uh, like uh, about options do you your strategy usually is to go with a, a preferred option and then have like the backup option uh if some requirement become more like uh, important to the stakeholder uh, while you are like discussing the solution that you're proposing or you just present like kind of three options and you let them digest them and uh, understand which one is yeah so usually what we say is we we go and provide the preferred option from our side but because we already know potentially from the request there might be a pushback we also provide okay. an option b we don't usually provide it immediately we keep it on a side just just because we know that otherwise we're not going to have enough time to work on this again and then if we need to trade off we show also option b and we try to understand why we need to move to option b if mm -hmm. we have to go ahead with that option then we just we just provide that option and 
potentially we try in the future to to slowly move towards the optimal solution from a UX point of view. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. But I don't see usually this doesn't happen necessarily too often, only when there are sensitive business decisions behind mm -hmm. where we need to just accept the fact that we are not going to be uh really focused on the on the user at that point. Yeah, and maybe you don't have uh, enough data to back the your your main uh, your main solution. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's usually easier to demonstrate it once it goes live and doing A B testing than doing it before. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank. And still on on collaboration and communication, uh more on the US the UX research part. Um, do you have any recommendation on some best practices you are following to um, share findings and, and communicate what you have discovered throughout the UX research to other team members like product managers or engineers? Well, in our case, uh, I would say user research is a quite challenging space because we need to operate uh, through the markets that we work with. So they are usually the ones having the resources and from a group level, which is where I sit, I can only orchestrate these activities. However, what I usually always recommend is, because I know about what the business wants to see, is bring back the value of every activity that you run, especially when it comes to user research. So don't do a user research only to validate one of your hypotheses, but rather collect feedback and try to bring them back as a improvement for the platform, which then can become an action, which then you can measure and you can demonstrate the value of that action. So by starting with one user research, you then enable to create multiple activities that could bring value back to the business. Otherwise, it's really challenging. Usually like we need to find uh, the best solution to not waste our resources because we have not sure about other companies, but we have limits and we need to work around these these limits of budget. Yeah. So you're basically starting with a, with a sort of problem and you find as much opportunities as you can to then test it fast and, and go on. Yeah, well, usually there's always some priorities mm -hmm. coming from each market. So because each market has the, you know, the the opportunity to test to do user research uh, uh, individually i can only recommend do it on the areas that you think are like a priority for the business especially during the year <clears throat> every year we have different goals so don't don't waste time and energy and resources on something that right now is not important even though we might consider that being important but it's not important for the business sure yeah and then of course there are side activities that we can always run which are uh, audits that we, we run, for example. Uh, we work with the data team as well. So we try to balance between quantitative and qualitative data, and we try to use them in different ways. Usually for me, uh, the quantitative side can give you some quick wins, while if you want to go deeper, then you need to go through user research. Okay. Uh, this last, last bit of information gives me to the second big macro topic, which is data usage. So uh, do you have as a as a, um, a design team KPIs or product metrics that you're referring to? And if yes, are you using it in your process? At the moment, we are not, uh, simply because we have to support from a group perspective each market, while each market has KPIs. Of course, we as a business have KPIs that we need to follow. But usually we don't necessarily have to stick to that in terms of uh, measuring, for example, uh, OKRs. That is not something that we usually do. It's more about knowing what the goal is and then supporting each area of the business to, to achieve them. Okay. In the, in regarding is that still more now qualitative data. So do you perform any user interviews or usability tests and how do you make these uh, kind of data readable to other to other people interested in what you have discovered uh, again that is something that we as a group don't do uh, we do it through each market and what they usually do is sharing with us uh, different type of researches that they might have done uh, in the past or new activities that they would like to run and then we discuss them to we discuss together about the insights from these researches 
and we try to find out what could be the best actionable points from from these researches it really changes you know like uh, we worked a lot on creating something new and now i always say we need to start doing more and more research otherwise we risk of just walking blindly without knowing what customers really want from our platforms sure um okay uh regarding the discovery part so trying to find the best solution uh to a problem you want to solve uh do you have any framework that you use during your discovery phase and if yes do you have any internal tools that you're using any tools that allows you to say to follow the the discovery process um so discovery itself is something that we didn't touch for a long time because the because the the point where we are right now on the you know on the development of our platforms is more about iteratively adding something new but something really small uh, however we approach to uh, doing some activities internally which i consider like part of the discovery phase and what i usually do is for example uh, as a really easy starting point for example running a brainstorming session uh, just to collect ideas from the stakeholders usually i tend to do this starting from design team and then inviting also other people to the brainstorming sessions and first is for example we discussed about how we could integrate ai into design processes and each person of course has different perspectives on how depending on the area that they are working on so we try to collect first some keywords which can re can re can relate to uh, ai and design uh, then we start taking these keywords and try to create some sort of uh, ideas let's say and then from there we create some action so we try to give some process behind this brainstorming uh, something that I am trying potentially for the future depending on whenever is going to be the case uh, I'm approaching to design sprints which is usually uh, done in eight days and each day has different activities to be run but it's not something that we are actually doing at the moment. I'm just just making some researches around it. Sure. Um, and still, once you have, uh, let's assume that you you have done this brainstorming session. Um, how do you validate if an idea or an hypothesis that you have identified um, it's good for development or not? So how would you say, okay, I found a solution uh, to to what the business has asked for, but how can I say, okay, this is the right solution to go for? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, because we need to work with different departments, including development, it could be marketing, can be business, com commercial. We need to understand whether each of these ideas which then become actions can be beneficial for someone specific, of course, or if it's just a good idea, but is not going to bring any value. Um, once we evaluate that, then what we do is try to understand what is the impact of this action and what is the outcome, of course, if it's a positive return for the business rather than an improvement on the operations or uh, maybe in terms of saving time, something that we did, for example, is developing a internal portal where we provide the documentation about design system because that is going to save time from meet from having meetings so there is no like a monetary value behind which could be potentially be calculated because you save time from having meetings but it's more on the time that you save on a daily basis so uh, for each of these ideas and actions then once we understand if it's valuable or not we share it with the people who should be involved in making these decisions and potentially be involved in working on this activity and then we understand if they could be potentially interested or not and if so then we try to prioritize it on our timeline okay yeah and, and usually uh, we uh, we we tend to at least from my side from my, from my team we tend to prioritize that during the summer time which okay. is usually a good time for us we know in terms of having a stable number of requests while before and after we go into 
after we go into the winter season before we know it's still too early uh, to work on them. So usually we dedicate some bandwidth during summertime. Okay, makes sense. And um, regarding said, all these processes that you're following, uh, you, you told us that now you're working on small iteration of existing products, but did it happen to have any side projects where you need to create a, a product from scratch that needed to be integrated to an existing product? And if so, did you follow any different approach to find, okay, these are the minimum number of features this new product has to, to have? Um, well, I would say probably all the platforms that we now use have been uh, redeveloped and redesigned from scratch because we went through a digital transformation. But I would also say those that were already existing, so we worked on existing requirements. While a platform in particular that I think is a really good case study that I also actually uh, wrote for my portfolio is uh, an internal platform called EPC. It's a uh, it's an acronym for Enterprise Product Catalog that we use to basically create products for our portfolio. And before this was uh, used from a third party provider. So we decided to create that internally to, of course, save money and also have more flexibility for marketing and sales uh, team. And we worked on a MVP, uh, working with the product managers and sales and marketing uh, teams. Uh, collecting requirements, uh, assessing them, analyzing them, working on very structured process, which is wireframing, reviewing, uh, adjusting, designing, uh, prototyping, doing usability testing internally, and then understanding if there was something that needed to be fixed from a UX perspective, and also from a tech perspective, because we had some limits that we needed to 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 consider from a technology point of view, also from a time point of view, because we needed to make sure that we could go live with something that was usable, even though we, we wanted to add something new. And then uh, once we were OK with the MVP, then we started working similarly to other platforms, which is based on requests. So we receive a request, and we implement the new functionality on the platform. Okay. So it becomes uh, agile, pure agile product development. In regarding the requirements collection, so I move away from, from the discovery part and just focusing on when you receive a request for a new feature. Um, do you have any flow that you're using? Is the design team highly involved in requirements collection or is mainly the product manager in, in your reality that collects the requirement and then discuss it with the, with the product designer? Um, so what we usually follow is a very, <laughs> took a bit of time to get to this point, but we now have a fully defined and working, effectively working process, which is the requester creates the request, provide requirements, the product manager reviews the request, uh, sends back feedback, asking for more requirements if needed or to make adjustments or to clarify uh, the request then we discuss it on a weekly call so on a weekly basis we talk with the requester usually it's specific people from each market uh, we ask for more details if needed uh, if if no uh, if no details uh, are needed then basically the design the design team so in my case uh, someone from my team is assigned to work on the ticket they work uh, on the design if they don't have any additional questions, they just go ahead and create a design. If not, they have uh, calls, internal calls. Uh, I might be involved or not, depending on the on the complexity of the request or also on the importance of the requests. And once the design is ready, we review it internally if needed. If not, they review it with the requester and the product and the product manager. It's it's very uh, fast process. Usually we work on a weekly basis on these requests because we need to make sure that we can go ahead before technology. Mm -hmm. So we usually work two weeks ahead, uh, two weeks ahead of technology. So we anticipate the next print. So then the design is ready to go to be developed. And um, usually when it comes to requirements, I think the the challenge is not receiving clear requirements. 
or receiving requirements that we think are clear, but then in reality, when it comes to the design, the requester realized that this is not what they wanted, or maybe something was missing and no one realized that. So we are involved in the, anal in the analysis of the ticket, but we are not involved in the creation of the ticket because mm -hmm. that is not something that belongs to us. And it would also take additional time. It's just because of the nature of the business and how the organization is structured. We don't, we don't, we are not involved in the creation of the ticket itself. Sure. And regarding the the UX part, you, you told us that you work in different markets. So I guess there there might be requests coming which are very different one from from the other how do you keep consistency across these different markets and if yes if you have any approach that you're following any any suggestion on on this uh i think that at least for us this is how it worked uh, so far and it seems to be working is having a solid foundation which we call design system so because of our design system, we are able to deliver consistently and efficiently in every market, having same experience or nearly the same experience, same branding. Um, from a management perspective, from a design management perspective, uh, we have we use Figma and we have different teams in Figma, which are for each market. For each market, we have different folders that uh, are basically each platform. And then we divide that into journeys. So we know exactly which journey is related to a market and we can compare that to another market if needed. But we know that most of the components are shared across every market. So that makes our life easier when it comes to delivering quickly and also for, de for development to be fast in, implement in the implementation. Um, probably we connect to this uh, design system part because it's something that we have discussed internally. Um, I suppose you're using just one design system for all your different platform. Do you have the different approach? So you have a design system for one specific platform. So how does it work on, you, on your side, the design system? Uh, we have one master design system, but we also have sub design systems, which are specific to different platforms. So the main design system contains all the atoms that are then reused in most of the platforms. But we also have design systems where there are certain components that are not used in other platforms. So by doing that, we know that the shared components from the uh, main design system are going to be used across every platform. And then we know that the components uh, contained in specific design systems are only used in specific platforms and we don't mix them. And of course, with Figma, it makes just life easier to just go to the main component and figuring out where this is contained. What we are also doing now is because of the size of the design system at this point, we are also splitting each component into a separate file so we can easily maintain that a component in the future and we can also eventually quickly dismiss it while before we used to have one single file which was becoming too much to handle and um, regarding the design system part do you have a dedicated team who's taking care of the design system or each team contributes to the design system we have one uh one dedicated resource to design system however he operates together with uh, other designers and the contribution doesn't come only from his side it comes also from ux designers um, but usually we have a sort of like a guardian of the design system who makes sure that everything works in the way that we initially envisioned it because the risk of having multiple people working on the design system is that then things get could get lost very easily mm -hmm. and so we decided to keep a very solid and safe uh, methodology of working for the design system specifically. Okay, and other teams can propose any new components inside the design system. So there's a process with which you can approve or refuse a components into the design system. That is actually something that we are approaching now. And yes, we are working on a process to make sure that we can introduce uh, new components 
uh, as long as these components are using the atomic components that are present on the design system, because those are for us the foundation level of the design system, then we understand the need, especially when it comes to the uh, content pages, so sales pages or marketing pages, to adapt them to the needs of every market. So we cannot mandate something because we know that each market has unique characteristics. And so we traded off the fact that not every component is always going to be used, but at least we know that the atomic components that are present in the design system must be there because those are going to guarantee consistency. Uh, in addition to that, we are also creating guidelines and rules around which components can be used and in which circumstances they can be used. Okay. So we have adopted a very specific process for that. Okay. Okay, I was saying before moving on to any other question, we'd like to know if there's anyone on. Yeah, that's, that's a quick one. Um, you, you say you are working on a process, meaning you are constantly adapting your your methodology and your your process. When you say so, you mean you like a top down. You're thinking on a new process and you discuss that with your teams, or is some kind of collaboration between your teams, like a bottom up where you discuss uh, we could improve this process and then. They, uh, we, you with them figure out how to how to so we have so far at least we had two different approaches one approach is there is no process we need to define it from scratch and we need to uh, depending on who is responsible for that process i usually ask if it's the ui designer who is working on the design system i ask him to define the process because he's the one who is working on it then we review it together I raise any feedback from my end if there is some problems because I know the nature of the design system is going to be used by someone else. I need to try and and think as the other person while I know that sometimes that, that is difficult when you are the owner of something and then adapt this to the, the each context and then of course sharing it with the people who are going to be involved in this process asking for feedback usually first time there are not really big feedback then once we share it and people start using it is where we have questions yeah. and then is where we need to review it so it's an iterative process It's never going to be defined yeah. uh, sometimes it might last for one year two years and then we realize that actually things have changed now and we need to change the process and i think uh, b before, at the beginning, you asked me what are the challenges. Uh, communication is the first, but also processes are really important. And if you don't have clear processes and people are not really following these processes, then is where you start seeing problems in the future. Cool. Makes sense. And is there any other question on design system for people in the in the meet? I know some questions I've raised in the past, so just to know if you have any any questions on that. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. I, uh, go, Fabio. Uh, have you built your design system from scratch? We did, yes. We designed our design system from scratch, and we worked so much on the design system that we consider it as a product at this point. And we have a dedicated board for, for that. We we have a dedicated resource. So that is, for me, untouchable at this point. As as much as any other platform, we consider that as a, as a product. And it's so integrated in, in, our ecos in our digital ecosystem that at this point, if something uh, is like, if a design system is not using any of our platforms, I think we would probably take 10 times more time than we do now. And you realize that only once you have a fully defined design system. At the beginning, it probably can feel easier, but there is a point, depending on the nature of the business, depending on how many journeys you have to cover, how many features you have to cover, there is a point where you need to have a design system. I actually, at this point, I really don't know how you could design without a design system. I, I would struggle, honestly. Yeah. I know it's a very very hard question to to answer, uh, but uh, how in your mind how 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 long did it take for you to see 
more advantages that are of having a, a good design system in place compared to the time and effort that you have to spend on the design system to build it. Because at the, at the beginning, it, it looked like, like you're spending a lot of time and, and effort on the on building your own uh, design system. Yeah. And it's, it seems like that you are like slowing down on important feature because at the same time you have to be to build a design system. So it, it is true. Sometimes it's challenging because you realize that yes, it's important to have a design system, but it, you also need to have flexibility and agility in making some changes. So what we did is we are okay to close one eye and say, let's go ahead in this specific occasion for now, only for this time frame with something that is not a component, but we are going to have it in our backlog to be created as a component, and then you're going to re be replacing it, especially when it comes to A-B testing. We don't want to create a component before we know that that component is going to exist. So we say, go ahead, as long as you're following the design guidelines that we provided, yeah. and then if that was going to work, we are going to create a new component. Or the other challenging situation is when you want to enhance a design system component, and you have five different markets with five different requests multiplied by five. So you have a component with 25 different options, and you need to choose whether you need to say no to some of these requests, or you need to decide whether you want to split that component into five different variants. And this is something that we are approaching now. And mm -hmm. it's challenging and it's time consuming. And also, from a development perspective, it's a lot of pushbacks. Yes. So <laughs> yes, yes. It's. I think there is a point where you need, when you realize that it be, the design system becomes so big that you need to potentially do a step back and reassess the situation and find a, a, a better way to to manage it. But it's. I think is in the nature of every product. There is a point where it becomes so big that you need to sort of redesign it and simplify yeah. it. Sure. Absolutely. Other questions? Theo, <laughs> I'm just not kidding you. No other questions? I can I can add something on the design system, you know, uh, uh, on a personal note. I, I think design systems can sometimes kill creativity because they uh, standardize the design. And usually designers are creative people. Not necessarily all the designers. I think UX designers might be less creative and more structured. But still, I think overall, people think design should be something creative. But if you approach it from a business perspective, which is what I tend to do now, I try to see the value of design for the business. It makes a lot of sense to have a design system because it brings you so many benefits. And it simplifies also the design process. So yeah. I personally always recommend to have a design system uh in place a proper one i personally think that you can be creative even if you have uh, like a few bricks to use instead of having having a, a completely white uh, white paper in front of you but at the same time sometimes you need uh, you you feel that you need to refresh on a different level not just the way you build all the components that you're using uh, in your uh, yeah your well, Maybe there is a point where you where you actually feel that is like uh, limiting you in, in uh, what you think you need to do in order to yeah. give you <laughs> like uh, to turn the page. I can say no. yeah. And the other problem is because you have one single person working on it. What happens is that that uh, those people become too uh, mm -hmm. harsh on on either on themselves because they mm -hmm. want to make it better or. If someone asks to make a change because they feel they own that, they don't want to make changes. So <laughs> sometimes can be can be challenging. Yeah, but yeah, I guess it's part of the day-to-day -day work. Yeah. So if there is any other question, in any case, we have time to to ask. Um, I would go to one of the last questions, which is more about team dynamics. Uh, so in uh, in we road we have just two designers at the moment that are helping us on four different product teams um the idea the question would be have you ever faced such a limited resources or 
time constraints a moment and if you have any suggestion on how you handle it even on for example on the ux research on the research part or even in uh, uh, in the design phase there is a constant <laughs> It's not something that I ever face. It's a constant. You always have to negotiate in regards to resources and where do you want to assign them and when. Uh, from, a, from a manager perspective, you need to know your team very well. Uh, you need to understand where they can be, uh, where they can bring the best uh, and where they could take instead longer where they are more comfortable, depending not only on their experience, but also on the period of the year. Because sometimes I always say every team is like a football team. There are periods when like someone is performing better than others. Someone is not really performing as you expect. Someone is totally off. So you need to make sure that once you really know well all of these aspects, then you can prioritize. They can, you can assign them according to what is the real priority and sometimes you need to trade off on something and postpone it eventually we have many activities that we run on a side sort of like side projects which don't have a deadline simply because we consider those to be secondary activities against the primary activities so there is usually for me my my way of approaching to this and of course there is a point where you can no longer negotiate this you need to be clear to the business and you need to demonstrate why and you can do it in many ways you can uh, for example you can compare the number of tickets that uh, the team has worked in the past year versus the number of tickets that have been already requested and that you have uh, you have a gap and this gap needs to be filled by having one more person and usually you can do that by having someone full time or uh, you can eventually you know uh, you can look into uh, contractors or third party providers so there is flexibility also from the business. Uh, they understand this, and it's mm -hmm. something that we we consider on a, I would say, on a quarterly quarterly basis. Okay. So I've went through all the lists. So we we'll leave some time to uh, understand if there's any other question that we didn't cover. So if you have any other curiosity, I do have one, but I leave the other <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> because I already like wrote ten of the <laughs> the question that we already asked. So three, anyone? Two, one, Simone. <laughs> okay, go on, Doug. Okay, um, not a specific question on any talk, but um, do you have some decision uh, that you made during the process of uh, defining your design system and all the process with the team that you regret? And now is hard to roll back to a better decision. That is a really good question, I must say. Uh, Remember the year recorded? Yes, there is one. And we actually, uh, we, we are trying to implement design tokens into our design system, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with design tokens, but basically they, additionally simplify the process of designing and creating new components and maintaining design problem is you cannot do this just by yourself you need to involve also technology and because we have a massive design system that means you need to go through a sort of redevelopment of every single component and you need to realize that the tech team doesn't have their, those resources to help you on that so probably if i would have approached to that now according to my now past experience, I would have changed the approach, which is starting really small and almost like starting with an MVP and then slowly progressively applying the design tokens to every component. While right now we are in a situation where we have design system, Figma tokenized, design system in front end, not tokenized. So we are now in a bit of like a transitional phase and it, this took much longer than we initially thought. So Yes, there are some situations where you you start with a lot of expectations, but then in reality you you need to you, you need to basically come back and say, okay, we need to change approach to this because it's not going to work. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Oops. Other, yeah, yeah go, go. Uh, now I, I will uh, go back to uh, one of the first uh, answer you gave uh, about communication, uh, which is, uh, I agree, super important in order to make the process work as we expect. But um, what I ask, you, what I want to ask you is, uh, uh, apart the communication that is strictly related to the process, uh, I don't know if you see me because I see you frozen. Okay, uh, so apart the communication that you you like uh, have in place. Uh, strictly related to the process, like uh, validation with the stakeholders and so on. Uh, with the rest of the company, do you feel that it's important that communication on what you're doing or wh when you think is, is the right moment to, commu to communicate to the rest of the company? What are you doing? What have you done? Uh, which impact have you had? Uh, so what was your ideal uh, or yeah. what you do in your company at the moment? so because there was no design function or design system or design team there was no design at all before at least when i joined the company we had to create this communication channel and we tried in different ways at the moment we are sending out uh, uh every quarter we send out a design newsletter design design update newsletter where we share the latest from from our team to the people who are relevant for, for us, of course. We don't send it out to finance because they would not be interested in that. But because we also work very closely with brand and also with internal comms, if there is anything that is relevant for the wide organization, for example, new templates for PowerPoint or anything that could be relevant for everyone, then we discuss about sending out a communication that goes to everyone. Uh, apart from that, we uh we started also having monthly forums uh depending on the on the area for example can be user research can be cro we want the people who are relevant for that area to be involved in these calls and share the latest and do a bit of a, a learning session where everyone can share results of you know uh, recent activities so other markets can eventually apply those to to their own market and and we also try to involve um, other stakeholders on a on, it depends it really depends it can be on a on a monthly basis can be on a quarterly basis can be only when needed but we try to share as much as we can it's difficult because it takes time it's a, it's something in addition to what everyone is doing so it's almost like yeah. asking for a sacrifice uh, but I think it's really important because it creates that. Uh, environment that is uh, more collaborative more about sharing mm -hmm. and i always feel that is part of communicate communications yeah yeah my sense. thank you Good. other questions i have a quick one uh you you talked about a b testing so just wanted to understand how much the design team is involved in MB testing. So what are the um, parts in which they are involved the most? Are the ones they define the hypotheses, what they test or, and how they collaborate with the product manager and the, the data team as well? Uh, it really depends on the AB test. So sometimes we might not be involved at all because we know that whatever they are gonna be testing, is going to be based on design system. We always have an eye on each A-B test that goes live because we receive an email. So whoever is working on the A-B test is gonna share an email to inform everyone there is a new A-B test coming out. Uh, if we should not know about it, then eventually we can adjust the trajectory and explain if something needs to be uh, adjusted. Otherwise, if there is design request involved, usually we have a process also for A-B testing. Everything goes into Jira and there is a label that says UI, UX. So we, we are informed if design is needed or design is involved and we can review it and, and share our feedback. If something is breaking the guidelines, if something is not within our brand, uh, uh, brand identity guidelines or rules, then we can just push back and say, we need to fix this um otherwise yeah we it really depends on each case there is not one one case that covers every scenario totally makes sense 
And and if I can also add, sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes there is no communication and something goes out right. without you knowing it and you just find it out once you open a website and realize we didn't know about this. That Why? Be there. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you need to give up on what I think probably many designers are obsessed with perfection. Like you cannot achieve that perfection. It's never going to happen and it's okay. Is in the nature of a business to not be perfect. It, it totally makes sense. Um, I would say if let me know if you have any last minute questions. Go, Fabio. Okay. Um, if you had to des um, build again a design system from scratch, would you consider using something uh, ready-made library or something like that and build on it or not? The first thing I would do is do spend a lot of time on assessing why we need to rebuild the design system, because if we are doing it, it means that there is a really strong reason of doing it and analyze what went well during this time what went wrong and also understanding where do we want to go and for how long we are planning to use this design system so doing a proper assessment and then creating a strategy a plan a roadmap and then start working on it but before that i would probably change my approach that before was we need a design system and we started we didn't have even the time to think about okay where are we heading with the design system we were just we were just doing it. Now the approach is changing, at least personally. And I feel like before doing something, let's think not twice, but three times, four times, five times. And only once we are convinced because that is gonna require a lot of resources. And those, reco those resources are money that are going to be spent by the business. So we need to have a really strong case for doing that. Okay. Last, last questions? <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> okay, if there's no other question, uh, I will thank everyone to take part of this product talk. And thanks again, Salvatore, to, to joining us today. It was super insightful to, yeah. to know these big tips, especially on design system, which is, <laughs> as you might have noticed, is a hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm it's going to... always going to be a hot topic. Even once you have it, it's going to be a hot topic. I can I can tell you in advance. <laughs> okay, good. Cool. I'm going to stop uh, the, um, the recording of the video. You can you can you can stay like, just a couple of minutes after the after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, all guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye.